Alright, 10 karma gained from that mission. Let's go ahead and visit the Quartermaster over here, which I think we actually haven't talked to yet. I think I was about to, and then we wandered off into that whole mission. Between episodes. Uh, the Task Force's Quartermaster looks disarmingly nondescript in his standard issue uniform. His posture is rigid, his spine ramrod straight. He watches you with eyes the color of wet clay, and the corner of his mouth curls into a smile. So, you're the talent Q and Lamb brought in, the Shadow Runner. He rubs his nose with a sleeve. The senior inspector has told me that you've got clearance to buy here, so your money's welcome. If you need supplies, I can outfit you for a reasonable price. He gestures at the array of gear behind him. There's, there are racks and arrays of weapons all neatly maintained. Off to one side, a pile of reinforced Duraplast crates catches your eye. They all bear the HKPF insignia, but you can also see some stickers on their, ca on their casings. Mitsuhama, H&K, Ares Arms. They look to be military surplus. Can't sell you everything, of course. There's some gear back there that's technically off limits for someone with your clearance level. Have a look, though. See if anything catches your eye, and if you're cleared for it, we'll talk price. What's in the crates over there? That's the stuff I can't sell you. Not technically. We're talking about big guns, heavy ordnance, that kind of thing. He leans forward and lowers his voice. Of course, it's possible that an item or two could go missing, or that the numbers on my inventory sheet could be wrong, and the odds of that happening might increase if you did me a favor. Oh, just cut to the chase and tell me what you need. A friend of mine's in trouble. Bad trouble. I'd be first in line to help him myself, but my hands are tied. I know exactly what happened to him and why, but I can't intervene just to save his life. You help my friend, and maybe I'll for I'll carry I'll forget to carry uh the one. I'll forget to carry the one. Oh, the one, like the number one, <laughs> when I'm writing out my next inventory control sheet. I've already done the legwork. You finished the job for me. See to it that my friend gets the help that he needs, and there'll be a nice payday in it for you. And maybe a clerical error or two related to the gear in those crates. You'll still have to pay for the gear, but I'll do the work to make sure that nobody notices it's disappeared. His PDA dances over the touchscreen of his PDA. I mean, his finger, his finger dances over the touchscreen of his PDA. The screen flashes twice in response. Just forward you the pertinent details. You'll find them on your mission computer. Please, don't drag your feet on this. My friend really is in terrible trouble. He wouldn't hold out much longer. Oh wow, there's another bonus mission. I thought there was just going to be the one side mission and then the major mission for the minor campaign, but here we have another one, apparently. I'll take a look. No promises, though. Thanks. If you want to look at the gear I've gotten on the rack? It's up to you, pal. Just say the word. How did you get involved in this with this task force? He shrugs. Got assigned to it. The same way that most constables here were. Believe it or not, this wasn't a volunteer assignment for most of us. When the Executive Council hands you in an edict, you follow it. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Sergeant. He chuckles. Don't really think there's all that much to say. Been on the force for 22 years now, and I've been lo loaning out gear for most of it. Got a wife back home, couple of kids. That's about it, really. His sentence trails into an awkward silence. Look, I've never really been one for small talk. You want to talk about armor or armaments? What kind of... Sec secure tech fabric is best for stopping a ceramic knife. I'm your man. If you're looking for anything else, though, you're barking up the wrong tree. Not trying to be unfriendly, mind you. I'm just a people per I'm just not a people person per se. Fair enough. Suit yourself. So, do you have some other business here, or I need some supplies? Let me see what you got on the rack. Let's look at uh oh magical items. Oh, you mean actual spells here, huh? Oh, might be might be everything actually. Any weapons? Wait, those are, those kinds of weapons and weapons and spells are different things in this universe. Interesting. Conjuring. Key casting. That's always fun. I already that has key casting nine. Yeah, I probably can't actually learn anything. Manifest. It says I don't. No, I, I have celestial manifest, so it's got to be pointless, right? Nerve strike. Yeah, I think those are mostly the things I already had access to. Consumables. Fetishes. A lot of fetishes. I don't know why I thought it- Whoa, whoa, they keep going. I don't know why I expected anything else. When I came and saw, uh, magical items, I thought, Oh, he means, like, 
you know, like, I was thinking like every other RPG I play where magical items means you get a magical version of, like, special weapons, but no, he means, it means literal magic. Not really relevant to me because I can't really use anything on these screens, but dear lord, does he have an inventory, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Let's see here. Armor, drones, guns, and grenades. He says guns and grenades, but I'm hoping for, uh, fist weapons? Maybe. May have been wishful thinking. They keep going, wow. Nope, they are all guns, that's for sure. Alright. Consumables. All grenades. It was an accurate representation. Alright, armor. You got anything better for me? So I've got the ceremonial garb. Does he have anything with a higher number on it? Don't think he does. I guess I've got pretty good armor on this character on this character then. Last category is drones. No, I'm good. Alright. Thought I would take a look. Not super relevant stuff though. I was looking because I got a uh I got 10 in points to spend on my character now, and I was just curious what they might have relevant. For example, what kind of higher level uh, fist weapons I could learn to use. Because with better fist weapons, I could do more damage and so on, but I need to ensure I can even use it in the first place. Let's see, let's go ahead and visit the crew we brought along. Hello, you. Isabel. A strange sound, like high-speed wind being pushed through a hole, roars inside the room. An odd blast of heat hit you as you pass through the door. You find Isabel hovering over a panel on the side of her computer, her back to you. She seems to notice your approach and turns towards you, flicking up a pro uh, protective vi face visor, blowtorch in hand. Hey. Despite the peculiar scene before you, there's no humor in- oh. That's- that's, that's supposed to not be her voice. <laughs> Despite the peculiar scene before you, there's no humor in her face or voice. Instead, she appears to be stern, focused, and annoyed with your interruption. Her index finger scratches nervously at her thumb's uh, cuticle. The silence between you grows. So that's supposed to be in a caption or something. They, they kind of have been making a few mistakes there, I guess. Uh, um, how are things? The sides of her mouth curled down into a shallow frown. Could be better. A lot better. She opens and closes her free hand. So, you're in my room. You need something? Not really. Heard some weird noises and came to investigate. Gotta say, I didn't expect the blowtorch. You see the muscles in Isabel's small frame relax. She seems relieved at the change of subject. Cops rattled up my rig when they brought the bolt hole here. I don't know how they managed it. Some eager rookie with zero boat sailing experience, probably. Even managed to damage the contents inside this panel. I have to refuse. I have to refuse a few of the components to get uh, things functioning again. No serious damage, most uh, mostly su superficial, but still an inconvenience. Her eyes narrow. Just goes to show you how much these people respect our presence here. I hear that. You want to talk about it? She considers a question for a while before finally settling, setting down her blow, port, blow torch. It lands with a heavy thump on the wooden floor next to her foot. Yeah, okay. Might as well get some things off my chest. What'd you think of the last run? I admit, when we first found Lily, I thought we'd been handed a high-paying babysitting job. She provided, she proved to be more capable, if also more snarky, than I expected, and then some. That really became obvious when she eventually refused to side with either Fuchi or Yamatetsu. She decided to put the power in her own hands, and I respect that. It would be a shame if someone with that kind of investment in life died. Maybe she won't. Maybe. Any more questions? That's all for now. See ya. So there's probably a little bit of follow-up I can do with each character about what happened uh, when they transport the, show the boat around. They're still trying to figure out what's up with this noodle machine. It's warm to the touch, and we don't know how it got here. Gobbit raises an eyebrow. Another day in pa in paradise, eh, Seattle? Seriously, though. We should get on that- on that- on that run for Q and Lamb. The sooner we hit that police station, the sooner we can watch Crate's messy public downfall. I'm not usually one for spectator sports, but this is one that I want a front row seat for. Don't worry, Gobbit. We'll hit the station soon enough. Good. 
So what's up with you? What did you think of the last run? Well, I wasn't there, so, uh, no. She shrugs. I got nothing. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about something else. There's nothing else. Just a quick just a little bit of follow-up. I actually forgot she wasn't there just because I've, I've used Gobbit so often because she has the healing skill. You were there, Duncan. You catch Duncan at the end of his workout routine. He grabs the towel wrapped around his neck and pulls it towards his face, soaking up his sweat to reveal flushed skin and, and brown eyes. Hey, glad you're here. I was just about to come find you. He grabs his goggles, hanging them uh, from the top bunk, and slips them over his face. The side jobs are fine and good, but we've got an opportunity here. We shouldn't squander it. Get me into that station, and I'll make Crate pay for what he's what she's done. A little overeager, are we? His nostrils flare at your comment. Overeager? Do you really feel like you can boil everything we've been through down to that? After what Crate did to Carter, after she fucked us sideways, forcing us to burn our sins, our lives, and take up running errands for criminals? A vein in his forehead begins to throb and he re releases a slow breath into a, in an attempt to control his frustration. I think over Igor is uh, putting a lightly grotto. And I'll bet you're feeling the itch too, so don't speak to me like that. I was out of line. All I think is that we shouldn't dive into this yet. Let it breathe for a bit, okay? He looks at you, mouth a straight line. Let me know when you're ready to leave, I'll be there. What do you think of the last run? That lily was thunderstorm of no fucks given. Wasn't, wasn't she? Knew just how to get under your skin. Pissed me off, but I've gotta say, I respect that she had the balls to call people out on their shit. He rubs his neck while he thinks. She might have been in her 70s, but that didn't make her the wiser. Decide with a core after all she's been through. Damn. That's not what happened. Uh, oh no, the game's bugged. What a waste. But I guess people will do anything when they're desperate. Hell, I know I have. Still, would be nice if for once someone benefited from the crap that these corporations pull. Who knows, maybe she'll live. I honestly hope she does. Anything else? Nope. Okay, that's a bummer. He's bugged. No. So along with the typos, we also have characters just flat out misinterpreting the events of the game and saying the wrong things. No. This, they, they could have done with some uh, revisions of this game, I guess. A little more playtesting. Welcome back. Was there something else you needed? What do you intend to do after we finish this? He shrugs. I suspect that I'll return to what I was doing before we got pr uh, press ganged into working for the HKPF. I, I will shadow run for funds and entertainment, and spend my f spare hours working on and refining my mechanical counterpart. Koshe scurries forward and Raktor rests his hands on the drone's chassis. The drone rubs up against his leg like a dog, light glinting off the smooth contours of his heart and body. Always a work in progress, don't you know? How could he not be? I improve Koshe. To improve Koshe is to improve the best part of myself. So you're saying that you'll never be finished with Koshe? I sincerely, I seriously, I sincerely, <laughs> I sincerely doubt it. Koshi is my masterpiece, and I will continue to refine him until I die. He smiles, his eyes twinkling. That's assuming that I fail to achieve immortality, of course, and that is far from a foregone conclusion, I assure you. And what about you, my friend? Do you have any grand ambitions to share? If so, share them. I'm all ears. Ambitions? No. But I think after this thing's over, it might be time to make a change. Far be it for me to dissuade you. Adaptation is in the face of changing conditions is a good thing. It always has been. That said, I hope that your change doesn't take you away from this group. He gives his cigarette a tap, and the ash that clings to the tip spills to the floor. We make a good, we make a good team, you and I. Now, let us change the subject, eh? The future can wait. I'm sure there are many more pressing matters we could discuss. What do you think of the last run? I won't lie to you, my friend. The little lie extraction tried my patience. I am not a babysitter, and being forced to endure, indeed, to protect a loud-mouthed brat set my teeth on edge. He examines his fingernails. In truth, I'd ra I'm rather proud that I was able to restrain Koshe from, from silencing her perfect uh, permanently. You would have killed a child. 
Does that surprise you? You already know that I am incapable of feeling remorse. He shrugs. When Koshe rips men to shreds on the job, I feel nothing save for the warm satisfaction of a job well done. I can't imagine that silencing Lily Lai would have felt any different. The drone stands statue still, motionless save for the ceaseless we weaving of its pedipalps. The red glow of its visual sensors pulses as it focuses on you. That said, for the record, I would not have harmed any chil I have not harmed any children to date. There are some lines that no civilized man should ever that should not cross, regardless of the state of his conscience. Well, it's a good thing you didn't kill her. She was the damned client. Hence my restraint. Though considering how things worked out, it might have been better or cleaner to her for her if I had. For Miss Lai's sake, I hope that your decision to kill everybody pays off in the long run somehow. Yes, she will almost certainly die a slow, agonizing death without the help of a specialized cure, but there is no guarantees in life. She could miraculously recover a spontaneous remission, perhaps. In the sixth world, anything is possible. Now, you have any other questions? Or should I return to my work? Off we go. So that character does know what happened, so individual characters have different responses because they... They must have just mixed mixed up the triggers for Duncan Gaichu. Hello again. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Nope. No conversation to be had there because he wasn't on the run and he has no dialogue related to the new state of the ship. Alright. Terminal time. Let's access, access the BBS. We don't have any pay data, right? Nope. I don't think we did. Keywords, no topics. All right, let's go to our uh, inbox for mission messages. Tiger's Den infiltration recap. Inspector Lamb, attached to this mail, you will find a brief recap of our conversation regarding Tiger's Den. Please save this for your records and review it uh, um, immediately. Tiger's Den infiltration, the handyman and team runners to be conveyed uh, to the Tiger's Den by Jomo. Upon entering f uh, the facility, runners are to secure access to the uh, second floor and its evidence room. Once said ac uh, access has been attained, runners will proceed to evidence room and gather evidence of criminal activity on crate. When evidence has been gathered, runners will evacuate to their in insertion point for extraction by Jomo. Use of legal force authorized but strongly discouraged bef before evidence has been gathered. Perhaps Q and Lamb will observe operation from offsite, but should be should not be contacted, except in cases of dire emergency. Gearing up from Lamb. If you find yourself in need of gear or supplies before you run uh, your run on the Tiger's Den, speak with Sergeant Lee. He's the ta task force's quartermaster and has been instructed to equip and supply you as if you were one of us. You'll still need to pay for your gear. Our funding and resources are limited, after all, but. He has an extensive stock of security-rated ordnance that might interest you. That's silly to me. They're, they're relying so heavily on my team doing these runs that the uh, the concept we have to pay for our gear is kind of hilariously nonsensical. But, uh, video games. If you need medical supplies or cyber tech enhancements, you'll find automated kiosks in the yard that can serve your needs. For anything else, I'd recommend talking to Captain Jomo. He can supply you with whatever we can't. I only ask that you keep your business between yourselves and that you leave me out of it. Even if you feel prepared, I'd recommend that you look at what the yard has on offer before you head to the tiger's den. It's better to be overprepared than it is to be caught flat-footed. Best of luck, lamb. Undersea lab job. From Sergeant Lee. Hey, good to see you're interested in my proposal. My friend, the one with the problem, is named Meng Kai Sel. He has been infected with a disease, and he thinks that it was done deliberately. Here, I've attached a video message he sent me. His conditioning- his condition is worsening by the day, so I'd really appreciate it if you could help him out. He's fairly high up in Manobe International. He's got a lot of money, and he needs some heavy-hitting freelancers to help him out, so... I figured it would be right up your alley. Menkaisal? An elder man with a sickly parlor sits down in front of the camera and coughs several times, a series of Intravenous lines are attached to his arms, and a pair of respirator tubes snake into his nose. When he speaks, his voice is querulous and has a breathless quality to it. Lee, I know this is a lot to ask, but I don't have anywhere else to run. I'm dying, Lee. 
The bastards of Shawase did this to me. I don't know how, but they got someone close enough to me and infected me with some kind of experimental bio-warfare virus. Minobe's best researchers are working around the clock, but ordinary treatments aren't cutting it. They figure they'll be able to cure, to get a cure in six or seven months, but I've only got one. The doctors tell me they need to create a line of monoclonal antibodies to fight this thing. Lucky for me, I know where one is. The Shiawase bastard that did this to me has been in contact with me. They said they'd give me doses of the treatment, just enough to keep me alive, but not enough to kill all the virus. All I have to do is sell out Monobe, give them insider information on our projects. Meng pounds a fist in the armrest of his chair, doubling over the rat with a uh, racking coughs. To hell with that. They want to play with fire, so be it. I need you to use your contacts. Find me some goddamn mercenaries. Not just any mercenaries either. I'll pay top dollar, and I want the best, you hear me? Monobe's information warfare teams have been tracked to probable location of the germ warfare lab where this goddamn disease came from. It's some undersea place out of now of out of out of Gao Meihao. <laughs> Codenamed Namatsu. It's totally unlisted. And that means only one thing, illegal research. The mercenaries need to get into that lab, find the germ warfare portion, and get me the monoclonal antibodies I need to live. Don't worry about getting down there. I'll loan you a mini-sub. Our security tech assures me they can blank the, the, the facility's sensor grid for just long enough to get a team inside. I don't care how they get the cure as long as they get it to me. If they want to be quiet little mice, great. If they feel like blowing the whole facility apart, I'm fine with that too. Just get me the goddamn cure. Let me know when you found somebody. So there you go. His family and mine have been friends for a long time, and there's no way I can help him directly on this one. This is Shewase. There, we're talking about. They pay me. Sa they pay my salary, albeit indirectly. Let me know when you decide uh, what to do. Take the run. If you're reading this, you've elected to take the job. This automated reply has let Meng know that the mini sub you uh, should be prepped and ready when you arrive. Go back, go talk to Jomo, and he'll take you to the submersible. All right, we have a new objective then. Here we go. This this game this uh, campaign might have more side objectives than I thought it would, making me only question more the the whole uh, six hour duration that the developers themselves gave. That's a surprise to me. Just because, uh, I don't know, maybe the main mission's actually really short or something. But, uh, generally I find that developers overestimate the length, lengths of their games because they're trying to make them sound really good, so they, they, they base it on the numbers of someone who played unreasonably slow or something like that. But, I feel like I'm gonna come in way longer than the actual duration. It probably, probably doesn't help that I'm reading out loud, though, because people inherently read faster when they're reading it in, the, in their own heads and not narrating their tactical decisions in combat and stuff like that. Hello, hello! What can I do for you, my friend? Let's see, let's see what you're selling. You have weapons, right? You probably have the fist weapons I was looking into. You have close combat 5. So just for going to 5, I can already get a better... better daggers, right? Let's see, strength plus 3. That's close combat 8 right there. Oh yeah, these are the ones I already own. And the next ones are are only at close combat eight. That is a that's quite a leap, isn't it? That's my concern. Is I would like to get better fist weapons, but close combat eight is quite a leap to run for, just to get like a plus one damage basically, and may to, and may do AP damage on critical hits. Other one causes bleed, which is probably the one I'd splurge for. Oh, the wielder, wielder is healed by, for. Five hit points per round for three rounds. Wow. Kill anyone with fist attacks and you heal 15 health over the course of three rounds, basically. That's pretty good. But that's a lot of, uh... That's a lot of goddamn, uh... Points into close combat. I can actually afford the item itself, but... 
problem is, in order to get close combat up to eight... Oh, it's just close... Oh, yeah. Never mind, it's just close combat itself. I can afford that right now. Let's confirm that. I mixed up close combat with unarmed. It was my mistake. Let's see. See what you're selling? I should just go ahead and get this nice upgrade. Oh, too many types of weapons right there. Calls for blood. Key casting five. Close combat eight. I can totally use these. Cool. That's like a crazy monk weapon. Absolutely. I'll totally go for these. Where are they? Um... Confirm. See you later, Jomo. Let's try to find the item real quick. I got that uh, screen confuses me a little bit usually. Shock glove and punching dagger. Wait, I just I just bought that item, right? Why is it not in my inventory? Oh no, there it is. Blood calls to blood, and punching dagger. They must have taken off my shock weapon. Oh no, there it is. Whoa, weird. Odd. Yeah, I I somehow misinterpreted this as being a fist icon and these being being my two currently equipped weapons, but no, that's, that's not the case at all. Can I equip can I unequip you? Not from this screen, maybe? I probably have to sell it from here. But yeah, I don't I don't need the other weapon right now. Let's see. Sell items. Equipment. I don't, I don't need the punching dagger as far as I can tell. It's just a flat out bet, uh, worse inferior weapon. That's the proper use of this inventory. And this one has a chance of stunning, so I, should, I think I should keep that around because it can be helpful. Let's go ahead and do the sell. So I should have like another thousand dollars now? Yes, I do. All right. I haven't used the sell screen. I haven't... I, item in, uh, and management's relatively rare as far as equipment goes because of how infrequent the updates upgrades are so it's a bit of a surprise for me I'm still relatively happy with how my character kind of my character mostly looks like the the symbol on there more cartoony in appearance the proportions are definitely different between the port the uh, paintings and the 3d models like they were handled by two completely different art teams basically but I definitely like that they somewhat looked similar because playing this game and wasteland a lot of characters I've noticed just don't look anything like their portraits and it's actually kind of distracting to me but hey Brand new gloves. That'll be our chance to do some serious damage and be scarier in general. That's what I was hoping to have happen. Now the question is what do I want to spend the other points on? Because I still have seven more. Load for me. Oh. There we go. So I can't get into body. We have seven points to spend. Quickness reduces chance of being hit by enemy attacks. Dodges physical attacks. I think I want more quickness, honestly. I'm already very- I'm already really tanky right now. And the faster I get myself, the harder I am to get shot. And that seems like it's super helpful, honestly. So I think I'm gonna go further into quickness. There we go. Confirm. I think that's reasonable to do. Because if, if this guy's already- he already has da he already has high damage reduction. And he's got like the best fist weapons I can find, basically. Now just to hit- oh, If I use, uh, the high hit damage reduction in conjunction with having high damage and high hit points and a high dodge chance, he'll just all around be a more capable fighter and will avoid these situations potentially where he's going down because those are always a bummer. All right, Jomo, we're gonna be going off to Shawa Sei for this underwater research lab. I think that's how we're gonna start the next episode, guys. Sorry if you're bummed out that the whole episode took place, took place in town, but there's maintenance to be done sometimes and it's Nothing if not a slow-paced game, but I'm happy to see it through. Thanks for watching like always, guys. I'll see you next time. And, uh, hopefully if I if I find some a good chunk of time to record this weekend, we might get daily episodes, because I might actually have a chance to finish it. We'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Next time.